I'm Alex, a pet portrait and animal artist specialising in acrylic paints. If you're new here then a very warm welcome. Today's video is going to be a studio vlog and you've joined me this morning on a trip to Hobbycraft. I'm just grabbing a few supplies. Hobbycraft yesterday and I picked up a few bits so I thought I would just show you quickly. So I got some of these little clips to pin back the pages of my sketchbook for when I'm doing sketching or painting. Also I've got a new sketchbook. The brand is Sea White of Brighton. So they supply a lot of products to Hobbycraft. Um, I don't think I've actually ever used any of their stuff before so I also am going to try a new painting technique. So I got some of this pouring medium. It's just the Hobbycraft own brand. And I'm going to do a pour painting uh, with the intention of put, putting it up on our walls in our house. So instead of buying fluid paint or specific paint for pouring, you can actually just use what you've already got. So I'm going to use my acrylic paints and mix it with this pouring medium and to do the pour painting I've bought some of these they're just cheap how much I've actually kept my receipt so yeah four pound 35 for three brushes and yeah I think flat brushes will work well for pour painting it's just easier to spread over a bigger area and um, these clips were four pounds 30 for six and the sketchbook was five pound 30 so not too bad I also got some new varnish acrylic varnish I went for matte this time mainly because they didn't have any satin or gloss but I also do want to try a matte so that was nine pounds and I picked up two cheaper price point branded acrylic paints I don't have many green paints I normally mix green from blues and yellows or black and yellow makes a really nice green. So I bought two shades that I don't have. This one is lichen green and emerald green. So again, this is to use with the pour, pouring medium. Um, Actually, and then I picked up these from V&M. These are just cheap. Uh, you get five brushes in there for three pounds. So really reasonable. And this is to do my varnishing and my gesso on my canvas stretching. So in my last video I was painting a sausage dog and until I got fairly close towards the end of the painting I haven't painted in a background but I decided in the end that it definitely needed one so here it is behind me it's not finished yet um background's only roughed in at the moment so yeah I've got quite a bit of work to do but yeah I think it looks much better with the background so yeah I'm excited to do a little bit more work on that today I have a commission as well to get started on this week. It's a cat called Juniper. Um, Emily, if you are watching, thank you for your commission order. Um, I don't really talk much about commissions on here, but if you are interested in looking to see previous commissions that I've done or interested in maybe inquiring, then all the information is on my website, alexgoddardart.com. And I've also got an Etsy shop with um, photos and prices and everything on there as well. So go and take a look if you're interested. And yeah, so Emily sent through probably about 10 photos of Juniper. So last night I went through them and I picked two that I think would work really well as a painting. And I'm going to quickly do a mock-up of both of them into my sketchbook. Um, mainly focusing on the composition and the values to see which one comes across better as a painting. So I'll show you that. I've still been painting designs for my greeting cards as well. I've been working on this one here. Hold on, I'll just take it out of the masking tape. So unfortunately, I, I think it's a failed painting. So I've spent quite a few hours on it, but it just got to the point where whatever I was doing, wasn't making it better and I know when a painting gets to that stage that it's not going to work out so there's nothing that you can do um 
it may be that the composition isn't quite right or the colours I've chosen don't really work. Anyway, yeah, I like the idea of it, but it's just, I don't know if it's the dog's face or... I don't know. So it's not working as a painting. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tear it up or throw it in the bin. I'll keep it. I'll keep all my failed paintings so I can refer back to them. Um, anyways, now I'm going to in my sketchbook do a warm and cool color chart. So I have a certain palette that I work with on most of my paintings. Um, I'll tell you what they are in a minute, but. I just have so many, this is just two of my paint boxes, so many paints, and I don't think I use over half of them. So what I really wanna do is just go through them all, paint swatches of warms and cools. So obviously within each shade of color, so red for example, you would have warm reds and cool reds. So I'm gonna go through all my reds, separate them, all my blues, all my greens, and then do swatches in my sketchbook and I think that will just help me to maybe try paintings with different colours in to see how they turn out. I kind of fallen into a trap where I just use the same paints for every painting and although although that works for me I do want to experiment a bit more so. So my kind of non-negotiable colours at the moment, the ones that I use for every single painting are these one, two, three, these five. So I always put these onto my palette straight away um so titanium white cadmium red ultramarine blue burnt umber that one is probably my most used apart from white that's probably my most used color burnt umber it's a great color and yellow ochre as well so this is a warm yellow um ultramarine i think it's a warm Warm blue. Blue's the difficult, because um, obviously blue's a really cool colour, so um, I think that's slightly more on the warmer side. Cadmium red is warm, and obviously titanium white, that's white, and burnt umber, obviously that's a warm. You don't really get warm or cool shades of this, but um, it's just great for animals, painting animals. So yeah, what I would love to do is incorporate more different yellows, blues and reds into my paintings. Um, yeah, so I'm going to do my colour chart now. yellows blues green I got very confused about it's so hard to choose warm greens and cool greens so yeah the ones that I normally use are cadmium red cadmium yellow and yellow ochre so they're all warm so I think I need to introduce some cooler reds and yellows um, I'm not going to introduce all of them I'm just gonna for each painting choose one warm one cool um, otherwise um, you can kind of get too many muddy colours if you get too many shades mixed in together and the same with the blue I quite often use ultramarine so I'm going to start introducing either cobalt or cerulean cerulean blue so this exercise ended up turning into more of a painting inventory so I swatched all the colours that I have and then I decided to group them into four categories so warm cool earth and then the fourth category was blacks and whites. So I'm using these plastic tubs and some masking tape and then just writing what is in each box onto the masking tape. I think this is a really useful way of organising paints because when you are squeezing out your palette when you first start painting, if you did want to choose a warm and cool of each of the primary colours and this just makes it really really easy to grab them from the boxes. I'm now going to separate these two boxes which have all of the non-primary colours so my earth tones and my blacks and my whites. So I'll have two more boxes and then I'll just put them up on my shelf and they're all ready to go. <laughs> put 
my new painting organisation system to good use and I've selected my colours for my commission that I'm just about to start. So I've got two reds, two blues, two yellows, one warm and cool and I've also got my trusty burnt umber and titanium white. I'm just going to make a note of the colours that I'm using for my next painting. Um, this is more for myself in the future so I can refer back to it. And once I've squeezed out my colours onto my palette, I'm going to do a quick colour mix-in session and just record some of the colours in my sketchbook underneath this writing. And now the last thing I'm going to do today before I go out for the rest of the afternoon is to do a couple of sketches in my sketchbook. So I mentioned earlier that the commission that I'm doing of Juniper, I've managed to whittle 10 photos down to two. And to help me decide which of those two are gonna make the best painting, I do these little composition value studies in my sketchbook. So two of the most important factors that go into thinking about and designing a painting are the composition and the value. So I'm just drawing out and designing the shapes here on the canvas, which obviously makes up the composition of the painting. And also value relationships are really, really important. And this basically means your dark, medium and light areas. So what I tend to do in these sketches is also map out the darkest darks, the lightest lights, and then all the mid-tones as well. And with those two pieces of information, the composition and the value, I then make a decision on which reference photo I think is going to be the best. evening time and I've made a good start on my commission of Juniper so I chose my favorite reference photo and I drew an outline onto the canvas and at this stage I've basically just used the acrylic paint in a, in a similar way to watercolor so I've added quite a lot of water into the mix and painted it very thinly onto the canvas and today I received an order for one of my Boston Terrier greeting cards. So my final job of the day is just to package this up, just doing a thank you card. Um, if you're watching Adrienne, thank you so much for your order. It's going all the way to the US, which is so cool. And yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. It's the next morning now and my first job of the day is to put together these stretcher bars that I received in the post recently. So this will be the biggest painting that I've ever done. It's 100 centimetres squared and it's going to be for my own home. So we recently moved into our house and in terms of artwork our walls are pretty much bare still. So I thought I would make a couple of pieces, abstract pieces of my own. And yeah, so this is the start of it here. So I'm using a roll of cotton canvas to stretch over the frame and I'll finish it off with some clear gesso by Michael Harding.
Kept Portrait Commission. Here's the finished result. I need to varnish it, wait for a couple of days for it to dry, and then it's ready to package up and ship out. It's quite large. This one is uh, 16 by 20 inches, and I, it's on deep frame canvas. So yeah, it's gonna need a fairly large box, so I'll try and dig one out. Yeah, so I'm pleased I finished that. I've got, I've got two more commissions that have come in. So I've ordered the bits that I need to do the canvases for those. They should be arriving in the next few days. And then, yeah, I'll get cracking on those. I don't know if you can tell, but I have a cold at the moment, so I'm sounding a bit bummed up. Um, but I wanted to share something that happened a couple of days ago. So I applied to teach on a platform called Skillshare. You might have heard of it, but if you haven't, it's basically a website platform where creatives can share tutorials with people who want to learn different things. So it could be painting, it could be creative writing, there's even YouTube tutorials on there, photography, there's loads of stuff. So I applied to teach my first online course and I got accepted. So today I'm just working on the tutorial videos. You have to film them in different um, bite-sized chunks so it's not all one long video um, so yeah I'm just kind of working on the structure of it and the script I've also started the painting so yeah here is the painting that I've been working on this is the first layer this has probably taken about I don't know 10-15 minutes so yeah the course is going to be how to paint your dog in acrylics and it's completely beginner friendly even for people who have never ever painted with acrylics before I go through everything from materials that you'll need, how to find a good reference photo, and also different painting techniques. So if that's something that would be of interest to you, then I will link it down below and head over to Skillshare and check it out. You do need to have a membership to watch the videos. Um, I've had a membership for a few years now and it's fairly affordable for what you get from it. There's just so much stuff on there to learn. And the way they structure the videos um, is great. They, they're all in kind of bite-sized chunks. So even if you have a little bit of time, 10 minutes, 15 minutes to spare here and there, you can kind of watch a couple of the, the videos. You don't have to watch the whole course. I just got to the end of editing this video and I've realized I haven't done an outro. So if you've made it to this point, then thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video and see you in my next one.